Count Dracula, or Vlad III the Impaler, was a historical figure and a brutal ruler of Wallachia. He was born around 1431 and became ruler of Wallachia in 1448. Vlad III Tepes became famous for his extreme cruelty and unusual tortures that he used in his country. He sought to strengthen his state and protect it from external threats, especially from the Ottoman Empire. Among the most famous cruelties of Vlad III, the Impaler was the use of spears that pierced the victim through a straight back. He was also known for his love of torture and murder, especially executing political opponents. Scientists and historians believe that the legend of Count Dracula largely inspired the English writer Bram Stoker to create the famous novel Dracula. However, the historical Vlad III Tepes was far from the image of the bloodthirsty vampire described in this novel. Vlad III Tepes died in battle in 1476 or 1477. His exact burial place remains unknown. However, his cruelty and severity remained in the memory and inspired many historical and literary works, including the legendary Count Dracula slash Son of the Dragon. The Details of Vlad III Basarab's life are rather vague. It is known that he was born between 1428 and 1431 in Wallachia, a historical region in Romania. His mother came from the royal family of Moldavia, Young Vlad had two brothers, Mercia and Radu, and the prince probably inherited the nickname Dracula from his father, whose name was Vlad II Dracul, from Rum, Dracul, Dragon, Asik, the Devil. The nickname goes back to the knightly order of the dragon, whose emblem was a golden dragon. Dracula was born in a turbulent time. The lands where he lived were on the border between Christian Europe and the Muslim Ottoman Empire, this made Wallachia a bone of contention. In 1442, the Ottomans organized a diplomatic meeting, to which Vlad II Dracul was invited with his sons, Vlad III and Radu. However, as a result, the Lord and his children were captured by the Turks. However, the father was soon released, but on condition that his sons remain prisoners. During his imprisonment, Vlad III and his brother received education in philosophy, sciences, and the art of warfare, confrontation. Meanwhile, a coup broke out in Wallachia. Vlad II Dracul was killed along with his eldest son. Vlad III was soon released from Turkish captivity and took the nickname Dracula, son of the dragon. At the same time, he began to turn into a ruthless and cruel ruler, which won him a dark fame in the following years. During the coup in Wallachia, Vladislav II seized power, the young Dracula dethroned him, but Vladislav soon returned him. Dracula gathered a large army and again marched against the usurper. A battle took place, during which Vlad personally beheaded Vladislav on the battlefield. This marked the beginning of his brutal reign. Soon Dracula received another nickname, Impaler. It translates from Romanian as the Impaler. Some historians believe that he learned this type of execution in captivity from the Ottomans, the Reign of Tepes. Shortly after regaining the throne, Vlad continued his transformation in domestic politics. His goal was to get rid of some of his old enemies, the boyars, who were dissatisfied with the overthrow of Vladislav II. Dracula understood that he would have to prove his determination and his right to the throne. Vlad III organized a banquet to which he invited his enemies. It is not difficult to guess that soon all the guests were executed and put on a stake. From that moment on, Vlad became the sole ruler of Wallachia. The scene of the massacre of the boyars depicted by Theodore Heyman strangely enough, the Christian world of Europe favored a ruthless ruler in his methods. The reason was that Dracula successfully defended the eastern borders from the Ottoman Empire. Even Pope Pius II expressed admiration for the Impaler. No wonder. Muslims posed a threat primarily to the centuries-old domination of Christianity in Europe and therefore to the Pope himself. During the years of his reign, Vlad the Impaler executed about 80,000 people from among his enemies. About 23,000 of them were killed in his favorite way, through impaling. It is difficult to establish a more precise number of victims. But one thing is known, Dracula's methods terrified his enemies, even Sultan Mehmed II, 
who himself was by no means merciful. In 1462, Vlad III was captured by the Hungarians. Practically nothing is known about this conclusion, but four years later, Dracula was released and married Hungarian Ilona Siladi, a relative of King Matthias Corvinus. However, Vlad Tepes soon died on the battlefield, fighting on the side of the Hungarians. According to legend, he suffered the same fate as Vladislav II. He was beheaded on the battlefield. The remains of the Wallachian prince were not found. The Legacy of Dracula Despite the fact that the historical prototype can hardly be evaluated positively, it has become a real source of inspiration for works of art. And it happened with the light hand of Bram Stoker. It is believed that the writer met an Orientalist from Budapest who, talking about the history of Eastern Europe, mentioned Dracula. As a true Irishman, Stoker was no stranger to mysticism and superstition. He managed to create an impeccable Gothic novel, making the main character a creepy but sophisticated vampire aristocrat from Transylvania, Gary Oldman as Dracula. Later, Dracula settled in the cinema. In 1921, the first known film, The Death of Dracula, was released. Dozens of other films, books, comics, video games, and other works followed. One of the most striking incarnations of Dracula on the screen is the 1992 film of the same name, where the role of the Count was incomparably performed by Gary Oldman. In 2020, Netflix released the miniseries Dracula, giving another interpretation of the character. The historical and fictional Dracula have little in common. They share a noble origin, the presence of their own castle and a passion for blood. Retribution. No matter how much success Vlad pursues, sooner or later they come to an end. The little devil, having been defeated by the Turks, thereby incurred the wrath of his people. Accusing the tyrant of colluding with the enemy, with the Turks, he was caught and imprisoned where he spent 12 years. They say that all the time he was sitting there, he amused himself by impaling rats and mice. In 1474, Vlad was granted freedom, and he again sat on the throne in his Wallachia. But he was not destined to rule for long. Very soon he was defeated by the Turks and was killed in battle, and his head was preserved in honey and sent to the Turkish Sultan. Thus, another Dracula, like his fictional namesakes, died a violent death. <laughs>